Hey everyone, I'm Jen Sheffer, Instructional Technology Specialist from Burlington High School in Burlington, Massachusetts. And today I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Classroom as more and more teachers are gaining access to this new uh, Google Apps for Education product. So I have uh, been experimenting with Classroom for a few weeks now and as you can see I'm um, in my classroom, I'm on the home page and I set up a classroom for my help desk course, my digital literacy course, and a demo class. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you will create your own class once you gain access to classroom. So if you click the plus sign in the upper right, you're going to go ahead and click on that and then simply create, click on create class. And this is where you can give your class a name. So I'm going to type in digital literacy and I'm going to make this my period 5 class and then I go ahead and click on create and now I'm taken into my classroom and just to kind of give you an overview of what you'll see one of the most important things is the classroom code that is down here on the left students will join your class by entering this code um, in this case, it's F1IJ0M. Now, you can disable that code or reset it. So if you have an add drop period and, um, you know, once that has come and gone, you can disable the code and nobody else will be able to get into your classroom. The other thing you can do is you can take a tour to learn more. That's um, typical of Google. They'll let you do that. Uh, but if you just are like me and you want to just play around for yourself, sometimes I skip those tours and I just kind of play around with it and see what I can discover on my own. One of the first things I wanted to do was customize my classroom. So if you come over here on the right um, on your header, you can see that you have the option to change your class photo. So right away that was something I wanted to look into. And you'll notice that currently there is a gallery of header options. I do hope that uh, Google will allow us as teachers to customize our header because um, we all tend to like to do that. But for now, um, since this is a course about the internet, I caught um, this one caught my eye. It looked like a, a web, so I picked that course image. So there it is. Um, right now, um, the stream, you can see uh, I have two options. I can share an announcement with my class or I can add an assignment. So I'll go ahead and put in an announcement. So I can say, welcome back. I hope you all had a great summer. And then I can post that. If I wanted to add um, a file to attach to that announcement, I could do that. I could also attach something from Drive, an item from my Google Drive. I could put in a YouTube video, maybe I create a welcome video and I can add that as well, or I could attach a link. Um, but just to keep things light for first day back to school and introducing classroom to my students, I might just go ahead and hit post and just say, welcome back, I hope you all had a great summer. Now if I decided, no, I don't want to do that, I can delete the message or I could edit the message. So say I wanted to, um, you know, please take a moment to introduce yourself. I could add that and then I could hit save. Now this course is all about um, digital citizenship. So getting my students used to having a professional online discussion and conducting themselves appropriately is something that um, I'm really excited about because Classroom will give them the chance to do that. So as you can see, um, the announcement has been edited for me. So the next thing I can show you is an assignment. So the title of this assignment is going to be About Me Google Presentation. So if I want to, I can describe this assignment. Um, so I can say, please create a Google presentation introducing yourself and highlighting the best parts 
of your summer. I can do that. <clears throat> and I can also change the due date. So if I want this to be due, um, you know, maybe the second Friday we get back from school, I could do that. I can also add a time that it would be due. And after that time, students would no longer be able to submit um, their project. So I could say this is due by 2 p.m. on the 12th. If I had a uh, Google Drive um, item, a, a Google Doc that had a rubric and a more detailed description of this project where I specified the number of slides and how many images I wanted and if they had to include video, I could attach a file from Drive. Um, uh, I might not do that. I just might keep it pretty open-ended. Again, and just kind of seeing where my students' uh, design skills are at and, and what they know already about Google presentations. So I could just keep it light again and just hit Assign. Now once I do that, you'll see that this assignment has been posted in the stream. And you can see that um, zero have been turned in um, and, and zero have not been turned in. I don't have any students yet in this class. So when I click on that assignment, it says there are no student submissions. Um, here I could change the point value or I can make it ungraded, which is a nice option because oftentimes we don't want to grade every single assignment, especially if it's formative. We might not want to do that. Um, the other thing I want to show you in this demo is if I click on folder, um, you'll see that that folder is empty. There's nothing in there yet, but I can also click on open in drive. And we have a new drive here. It's brand new. You see that in my activity stream here on the right, I have that digital literacy folder created automatically for me and the assignment, the About Me Google presentation is also created there. If I click on my drive over on the left, I should see um, Classroom. And if I click on Classroom, again, you can see in my classroom folder it's there. Everything that I've done in classroom is here in my activity stream. I created a demo class and put some assignments in there which I'll show you in just a moment but um, it will do the same thing for students. Classroom will create the folders for the students each class as well as each assignment that the teacher creates. So if I go over back into my classroom and I click on the back button um, I want to show you, um, so this is what the stream looks like right now. It's still in beta. Um, it's clean. It's simple. Um, the slogan right now is less teching and more teaching, and I think that is um, a great philosophy. Teachers are not going to have to worry about, um, you know, extensive training on how to get their classroom set up. You saw that demo. I, I did it in, um, you know, less than two minutes. Um, I get a notification here that there are no upcoming assignments due soon. Um, as far as students joining, when I click on students, this is my class roster. And I played around with manually adding each student. And it took me, you know, maybe f four or five minutes to do that for um, a full roster. But the easiest way to get your students into your class is to just give them this code. Once you give the students the code, they're going to be added and you will not have to do anything as the teacher. Um, it's really um, quick and easy and that's what I love about Classroom. I can't wait to use it. If I go over into the upper left, I click on my Classroom menu. Here's where you can see a few of the classes that I've created that actually have a little bit of activity in them. So I'm going to click on my demo class. I did this at our Ed Camp last week and I titled it Demo Class Summer PD. There's a few um, assignments here. Uh, we tested it out with Move Note. I made a real quick Move Note and then I added it into um, as an assignment and it did work. That was something I was curious about. I'm, I'm really curious to see if um, other products are going to integrate seamlessly with Drive and so far so good. <clears throat> so as you can see here, I do have some students in this demo class, several colleagues uh, from the Burlington District, 
a few outside of, um, they're actually all in the Burlington district. Um, you ha they had to be a part of our domain to get into the class, but you can see it's very um, easy to read, gives me the student status and what their grade is for this assignment. Um, once I do have grades in there, you can download a uh, CSV file of the grades. Um, it does not integrate right now with um, a, a, an SIS grading uh, system, but uh, maybe down the road that'll work. I'm not sure. Um, the other thing I can show you is we, we also tested Educanon, which is another great product we're excited about using with um, interactive video lessons. That also worked. And then I put in um, a summer reflection assignment. I said create an Animoto highlighting your summer. And here you can see that there are two students who turn that assignment in. Let's see who those students are. It's loading here. Oh, and then they are okay thought there was going to be an error but there is not so this shows me who turned it in and of course it was um, Ms. Marcus and Ms. Olsha are the ones that turned it in not surprised so I can click on the folder they're very good students I click on the folder and there are the assignments created by my students so we can open up um, what Diana submitted, she went to Denver and she saw this big blue bear. It's pretty neat. And then this is what Tara did. Maybe she's not having a very good summer so far. <laughs> so I can um, head back into the assignment details. I can go back to the assignment in the stream. Once I've graded everything, I can look at all the students who didn't turn it in. They're still on summer vacation, so they're they're not ready to do any schoolwork yet. I don't I don't blame them. Um, so again, it's a real clean design, um, and I can get I can gain access to my students' assignments very easily. Once I've graded the students' assignments, I can click on this button over here on the right next to the due date, and I can delete it. If I delete it, it's, it says, I get a warning, all comments on this assignment will be deleted. If students have already turned in files and you want to return to them, you can share those files with students in Google Drive. You can't undo this action. So, again, it's tough to um, get a full uh, grasp on this product without having students in there, but um, I'm pretty excited that it's not going to take much time for us as teachers and our students to learn this and feel comfortable with it. The other thing I did um, just to show you what an online discussion might look like is I um, welcomed students to my classroom and this is interesting because this looks like it's it came from Mary O'Connell which was um, a student in the classroom so I'm not sure how that happened but um, it might be a little glitchy so we'll, we'll have to wait and see but um, looks like a great addition can't wait to start using it and um, Barbara said she might say au revoir to Edmodo here's another announcement that I added welcome to classroom this is where you will submit all assignments and participate in online discussions and Tara said it was exciting um, and Ilara, Ilara said it was a great website so it sure is and I hope this demo gives you uh, a better understanding of what is to come and I'm excited about it we'll be doing some more training on classroom um, next um, during our ed camps on the 22nd and the 29th if you happen to be in the Burlington area come on by also on August 5th um, this is a course also a really quickly that um, students are actually in I manually put my students in there and I actually uh, probably can't show you these because they're part of our domain and I don't want to reveal their identity but I'll just quickly go down you can see that um, there are no pictures yet I do know that um, students will be able to put, upload their own pictures um, for their profiles so again I think that's a great lesson in digital citizenship 
students will, you know, um, I will uh, instruct them to pick a picture that is appropriate and demonstrates their uh, responsible digital citizenship. So that's it. I hope to see you in Burlington uh, throughout the summer. If not, I'll see you in the fall or online. Um, I'm at JL Sheffer on Twitter, and I'm also the GEG leader for Massachusetts. Hope this was helpful, and thanks so much for watching.